Alright guys, just a quick rundown on my new hydro setup. Uh, we'll start over here. So we got our water line coming up over the garage with some power. Got a hefty power outlet there. Um, this controls all the water pumps and water related things. Uh, right underneath it, we have our Milwaukee Technologies uh, pH reader and auto doser. And that is auto dosing our large reservoir. We have a one-fourth hose stop valve there to kind of further control how much the doser puts in. This is usually used for large fields, so it kind of overdoses a little, so this kind of helps that. Moving over here, we have our Inkbird water temperature reader and controller, and that is reading our control reservoir that feeds our six buckets inside of our tent here. Uh, maintaining the water temperature there. If it gets too high, it turns on the water chiller. This is a one-fourth horsepower Eco Plus water chiller. If the water in here gets too cold, it will uh, heat up the heating rod there. You can see the ink bird temperature reader just sitting there in the water. So, keeps my water temperatures within a perfect range. This is a 32 gallon uh, reservoir for my mixing of my newts. And again, maintains the pH level of it. So as my plants feed and the water level gets low, I open up the stop valve number two and give it some food. Uh, I do that periodically throughout the week. And then um, once a week, I'll open up stop valve number one. Uh, and then we just refill this whole bucket. This bucket itself, has a dual level float valve so it knows when to shut itself off when it gets too high so it doesn't overflow but it also knows that to not fill itself up until those little float things get down to the very bottom and then it drops the lever to start filling itself up it's at that particular point that I know that I need to start feeding it some newts uh, we got ourselves I think this is an Eco Plus air pump with a 12 head feeding our six buckets as well as a air stone inside of there. We have a pump in here, small guy, just turning the water around so that the pH reader has a more accurate reading um, and does micro doses instead of large doses. Uh, and of course, we got a little box right here with our pH up and down, a little reader, um, calibrating solutions, Gotta have one of those. Uh, moving over here, this controls all of the lights and exhaust. We'll get to the exhaust in a moment, but uh, this is just a simple timer. Uh, I went ahead and colored the power on and off button just to kind of visually see it better and just tap it if I need to for testing. This is my fan controller for my exhaust. Uh, with my tent that I have, um, the one that I got, you know, they say you want to go big and then buy one of these just to kind of fine-tune it down that was exactly what you want to do so uh, I went big and the negative pressure just default was too much so I turned that puppy down to almost middle almost mid doing pretty good coming over here we have another ink bird controller this controls the air temperatures um, we're just running the thermometer the roof as high as point as it can get. Uh, the heat tends to rise so it's a good point to kind of measure from there. Um, and it's controlling our AC unit, window unit, just sitting down here. Got a towel over it. Nothing special. I'm not trying to make the tent. This is a Apollo 5 foot by 5 foot by 6 foot tall tent. Really nice. Um, we're not trying to really make this airtight sitting out in a garage so it's got some nice oxygen coming in just through the garage. Inside the tent, we have our six buckets, they're pumped, uh, pushing the water into the top of the buckets, creating a waterfall effect, and then the recirculating effect back out to the control bucket to the bottom. Top lines are three-fourths. 
inch. Uh, bottom lines are full inch. Uh, the one coming into the pump is inch. The one coming out begins to be a three fourth. And then uh, each bucket has a one inch filter slip. Um, so there's two per bucket. And that way that uh, there's no chance of any of my my hydro ton there, little rocks falling through the bucket and getting sucked up into the pump um, or any roots. There's just nothing, no debris is really going to get close to that pump. In fact, uh, not only do the buckets have filters that go out back in here, but I opted to have, I don't know, we could probably see it in here, a one inch filter slip right there that feeds directly to the pump. So there's really no chance of having any roots or little hydroton pieces or sort of grow mediums get into that pump right there. And it keeps the, ni the lines nice and clean, so all I gotta worry about is just kind of cleaning out my salt factor. We have individual stop valves on each one of the buckets here. So I can control the level of all the buckets so they're even. Um, because the concrete it sits on is a little bit off and I didn't want to spend time cutting out pieces to sort of level it, each one. So I can control the levels however I want. It's really cool. I can make that one really high, that one really high, that one really high, and then the rest really low. I can do a whole different combination. I can do a staggering effect in either direction. Um, we got a little heater in there. So when the temperatures get too hot in here, do the inker controller thermometer that's uh, hanging down back there. Hard to see. Uh, throws on the heater or the AC. We have a humidifier. I'm waiting to get my dehumidifier that will sit over here. We've got our carbon filter that goes into our lamp hood and back out. And then we've got a humidity controller. As you can see, I'm still waiting for my dehumidifier. So we can set the range that we want for our humidity in here, and it will flip between the two, making sure that we have perfect humidity. So we have perfect water temperature, perfect pH, perfect air temps, and perfect humidity levels. I think we're ready to roll.